Hello, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to talk not about Genesio. We'll talk later about Genesio. Uh, we will talk today about market making this um, on uh, Vega decentralized markets. So uh, where is the? Yeah, I don't think I'm. Gonna... Okay, so I have a slide about uh, what I'm doing, and mostly the purpose of this slide is to show that my experience is mostly in Web2, but I'm very passionate about Web3 also, and I try to keep myself up, up to date with what happens there, which is very hard because I had its limited amount of time, but I'm doing my best uh, to do that. So. Uh, one day, a good friend of mine came to me. Uh, he has a, he's from Playable. He has an agency uh, providing uh, services in blockchain. And he said, OK, I heard about this project. It's Vega. And they have a bounty. They want to test their system. And they say that we have to build a market maker that trades derivatives on Vega decentralized markets. And the requirements are that you have to don't go bankrupt for one week. You have to maintain the reference price, so the market price it has to be correct. And you have always you must ensure that you provide liquidity at all times. So you have to make sure the order book is perfectly balanced. And I was like, okay, so a lot uh, some unknowns. We have some unknowns here. I kind of knew what market ma market makers are, but I've never built one and I've never interacted. Probably I've interacted indirectly with one. Uh, I kind of knew what derivatives are, but Vega, I never heard about these projects. And I said, OK, let's, let me document myself a bit first. So I read some articles about market makers, especially market makers algorithms. Uh, and then I looked over Vega's documentation, which it was surprisingly good. So and then I said, OK, let's uh, let's do it. But I will add one more requirement to all these three. And that is I have limited amount of time to develop because I'm doing it in my spare time. So I have to make sure I satisfy all these three requirements. But with by building the most simple and stupid uh, thing possible. So Kiss, as uh, <laughs> my colleague said. OK, so let's. Uh, Let's jump right in. So what are derivatives? I think like most of you know what they are, so I'll not enter in too much details. You can ask me if, uh, if there is something that you want me to clear. So they are a financial contract that derive their value from an underlying asset. They are uh, used in um, to hedge risk in real physical world, but they are also used for uh, trading with leverage or if the leverage is too too high to just gamble or you you can use it to bet with the market or against the market so you can bet using derivatives that the price will go down okay and here we have an interface but this one is, is with the centralized market it's on binance and here we have btc usdt and what is important we have here order book so on this side of order book we have people that want to go short so people that think the price will go down in the future and they want to make some profit and here we have people that think the price will go up so they want to go long and whenever these two orders from the order book cross a transaction will be made okay so these are derivatives but let's see what a maker market maker is now and what is the purpose of a market maker? Well, the purpose of a market maker is to provide liquidity to a market, especially if it's a new market. And another thing that a market maker does, it makes sure that the price is kind of correct, because if the spread between the bid and ask is too big, then you will not be sure what, what the actual price is. And here we see an example of that. We have the, an order book here from, for a market. And for example, here, you don't know exactly what is the best price. So if you just go into this market, the price could be anywhere 6 and 10. But what the market maker does, he narrows the, the gap between the bid and ask. And now 
it's a bit more clear that the price is between eight and nine. And he provides all of this liquidity and he earns from the gap, which uh, from the from the gap, like if someone he can sell here, here and then he will make a profit out of that, uh, out of that gap. Okay, now let's see what Vega is. Vega is a, a kind of new project and they are building this decent, uh, decentralized platform from tra for trading derivatives. They have a governance token, which is called Vega. And with this token, they can um, create new markets. So people that own this token can vote for uh, new market creation. They can vote for uh, how these markets can be configured because we will see that they are very configurable. And then basically they can decide on anything that happens on Vega. Uh, of course, guys, commission, so all the properties that derive from the fact that it's decentralized. And they also have a cross-chain settlement. So you can bring tokens from different blockchains uh, into Vega. Let's look a bit over their architecture. They have their own blockchain for, uh, for everything that is market-related. But they also have some bridges with different, um, with different blockchains. Actually, uh, currently, they only have integration with one of them, which is Ethereum. So you can add uh, ERC-20 tokens. Uh, you can use ERC-20 ERC tokens for settlements. Um, their uh, blockchain is using uh, proof of stake uh, for, uh, for, value, uh, for the consensus. And as a client, you can use all the gRPC, REST, GraphQL, um, uh, protocol in order to interact with the with the nodes. Okay, so I read the documentation, articles, blah, 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 and now I start. Okay, let's do. Let's start coding. So I created a wallet. I found it. I fund it with some fake money. Of course, it was everything on testnet. I downloaded the Go SDK. I start writing the code. I executed the code, and I crashed completely the uh, whole market. Uh, so what happened is that I had a bug in my code and I bought uh, the whole side of an order book. And then the price went in a completely different direction. And what happened is that the market inter entered into something which is called price monitoring mode. So, and then I went on Discord, I asked, oh guys, I fucking saw something up. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. <laughs> They were super helpful and say, okay, this is what happened. They give me the documentation I read. And basically what happens is that the market can be in multiple modes. It can be in continuous trading, which is what you want if you are a market maker, or it can be in price monitoring mode, which uh, is triggered when uh, the network determines that a price is uh, has a huge spike. And this huge is defined by a... Um, a risk model that is voted and uh, at the creation of the market. You, you remember when I said that the market can be created by the owners of the tokens. And when they propose a market, they also propose different risk models that define how the market will behave. So this is one uh, behavior that uh, can be configured. So the market determines that, okay, this price, the probability of seeing this spike is out of what we consider normal. So uh, the market will enter in an auction mode. So the order that triggered the spike will be blocked and the market will enter in this auction mode. And then uh, people can put orders, but like in, a, in an auction mode. And this will last for only, uh, again, it's configurable. So it will last for a short period of time. And then when this period entered, the price will be determined. If the spike was actually normal, so people actually put their orders around that price, then that will be the price that is correct. Otherwise, the order will be discarded. This is in a way a protection mechanism for, uh, for different events that can happen and it could liquidate people. Uh, another state that the market can be on is liquidity monitoring, and this is, happens if the, mark, the network determines that the market does not have enough liquidity on it. This is risky, of course, because um, you are trading derivatives here. People at some point will have to be liquidated. And if there is not enough liquidity, they will not be able to be liquidated. 
So the market enters in this liquidity monitoring and it will wait for people to provide liquidity. And it will not, uh, this is like a permanent state if the price monitoring is just temporary, it will end after a few moments. One second. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, in liquidity monitoring, it's just you have to provide liquidity. Otherwise, it's not. Uh, it's not going on. Yes. And uh, what happens if you get liquidated while you, while you are in the liquidity monitoring mode? Uh, you will not uh, during liquidity monitoring. No orders are executed. Or, uh, no, no. Everything stops. So uh, the market is basically paused, mm -hmm. and so it will wait for people to put money. So no one earns earned fees or anything. So just wait for people to put money in so yeah, the to provide liquidity yes and then it will resume yeah the, it will not change because no order will be executed so the price will be maintained okay so is this actual real liquidity people have to put their ETH here in the protocol or is some derivative of some sort no you have a settlement uh, token mm -hmm. uh, for example the one that i participated in the last simulation had ethereum uh, with settlement in die uh, and you have you use as collateral die in this case but of, of course when you create the market you can configure it as any way you want so you can put uh, any settlement, any ERC20 set, uh, token that one. And in future, probably if they integrate multiple blockchain, you can put uh, also others. Okay, so I fix this problem and then I say, okay, let's see how uh, this uh, EGAP platform handles leverage and margin. And the way it does that, you, you have a general account where you put this uh, token that I was talking about earlier. And you put this in the general account and let's say now you want to create an order on this market the the network the market will propose like an initial amount of money that you have to put into this margin account so this margin account is used as a safety mechanism so if the price of the asset that you are betting goes against you you will be like liquidated you will lose this amount of money so this is the purpose of the margin account and the amount that you put here is uh is determined by the network and i think it's dynamic so it changes depending on the conditions of the market and we see here other three uh levels let's say that the market moves against me so i i put the order and then the market moves against me so i fell below the search uh, level and now the network will try to look for some funds because i'm approaching the maintenance level which is the level above which if i go i will get liquidated so i lose all my money uh so the the network will try to see do i have some money in my general account yes if yes it will uh, put here above the it will put me above the search level and i think i also get a warning in the in the um, interface saying that you have to put a bit more money because you are on the you are working on dangerous grounds okay if the ma uh, market moves in my favor so i've have a long position, the price goes up, then I go uh, above the release level. And here the network is telling me, okay, you really don't need this amount of money in your margin account. You are, we are perfectly safe if we are putting some money back into your general account. And you can use them for trading. You can do whatever you want now because you are okay. Um, no, the, the, it's automatically. Yeah. Everything is automatically. And all these levels, like they change, the maintenance level change depending again on the risk model that the network is configured with. And the leverage is, of course, if I have 100 uh, BTC and I tra I'm trading like 1000, then I have a 10x leverage. Uh, so and if i let's say i put an order of 100 ETH, uh the margin account will not be 100 like the network will tell me it's okay put a guarantee here in the account of 10 let's say or something like that so it'll be less than what you are trading with and this is how you can use leverage yes Oh, if I uh, let's say uh, long uh, ether with five uh, x and uh, the protocol moves some it from my margin account to my general account, does my position decrease? I mean, if it goes up even more, no, I just just the margin account, the amount that you have in your margin account, 
decreases, but the, your position will be the same oh, because okay. you can like trade more than you have in your margin account. So it's like giving me some profit in advance, something like that. Uh, no, because I, in a way, it's, I think it's theoretical profit. It's not yet yours because you just ha you have a long position. If the market goes down, will you will lose that profit? You will fall. You will fall again below the surge level, and it will ask more money for you. You you will have the profit only when you are zero. So when you sell your long position in profit, then you have. You can say you have actual profit. It's unrealized profit. Okay, but you said that it's going to my general account, and I can use it. Yes, you can use it. But again, if you let's say you are in this situation, and you. You withdraw everything from me from your general account, yeah. let's say, but you still have that long position. The price goes short, so the, the price goes down, and then you will be in this situation, but without any funds in your general account. And the market, uh, the network will say, Oh, you are it's pretty dangerous. You, you have to, so it's it, forcing me to put back from my general account money now. Yeah, but if you withdraw everything, because as you said, my yeah. Like, yeah, you, you, so can, I, you uh, can I withdraw from the general account because this is this would be a problem? No, you, you can withdraw. So, what you have in the margin account is what the network thinks is safe for you to block as money. Everything else, everything that you have in a general account is up to you what you are doing. But if you fell under maintenance level because the market moved against you, then you will lose everything from the margin account. <laughs> the maintenance level changes every time when the price goes up and down on the on the network. Uh, yeah, yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. The, the network will determine this maintenance level as safe as possible. So it, it will try to be like, depending on if the, if the price goes very very up with a certain probability then you still have money in your account to 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 get liquidated and everything be even so if that's the liquidation engine has an auto deleverager built in so it deleverages me automatically because it sets the maintenance yeah it will always make sure that the amount that you have in your margin account at the that price at that moment in time will be enough for you to pay if something goes bad. But what if the price goes again go on and on and on? It will just drain your general account. Uh no. No, it automatically it out it automatically, yes. Yeah, yeah. It will try to fund me. If it if I go below the maintenance, I'm it's done. Like I lost my position. I'm I am getting liquidated. Still your mar market ah, account. sorry. It, uh, this happens if I don't have anything else left mm -hmm. in my general account. The general account now is redundant because it's, it's, it's like... yeah, yeah, yeah. The general account you you can use it on different markets. Yes. I think I, I, I never used the, so during the simulation, I only was one market at, at the time. Uh, but I think you can uh, put, I've seen, I think I've saw in documentation that you can allocate certain portion of the general account to the market, to different markets. That's nice. Because you think I'm, if it's that, okay, this market will have that 10% of my general account. Yeah. That can leverage. 
after that, okay, with my urine, you can, I, I, I can get into the system. Yeah, I, I think it's like that. We, I'm not sure we, we can check afterwards the documentation. Okay, so let's uh, move on. Okay, so I fixed my bug in the code. I executed it, I understood how these things worked. And then I hit the second problem. It was not that uh, bad. I didn't break anything. It's just that I didn't collect enough fees. So let's talk about fees now. Um, in, a, in a Vega market, there are two roles, a maker and a taker. A maker is one that puts an order in the order book. And the taker is one that uh, puts order in the order book, but above uh, another one, and the, and the transaction is made. Hmm? Yes, yeah. So whenever a transaction is made because someone put an order in the order book, the one that put the order is the taker. So and the maker is the one that puts orders uh, there, and they are not executed. They are waiting to be executed. And um, why they are doing this is because they encourage they want to encourage again liquidity on the market so whenever uh, a maker whenever a taker puts an order and that order is executed uh, he will pay a 0.02 percentage to the maker directly so the, those money this amount of percent goes to the maker the taker will also pay a 0.1 percent to the infrastructure which is the which are the validators so the ones that make sure the whole thing is working. All of these are configurable by, again, at the creation of the market. And they also pay a 0.04 to the liquidity providers. So what are liquidity providers? Liquidity providers are actors in this system that block a portion of that, of that general account. So they block a portion of that. And they guarantee that they will always have orders in their order books that sum up to that uh, amount of money that they blocked. And uh, this, is, this mechanism is useful because you want to always make sure that uh, you have liquidity on the market in order when you do the liquidation. Yes. Yeah, so you, you, I, if I understand correctly, let's take an example on an order book. You are saying if I can put the orders here and here, yes, you have. Um, actually, this is what I did, and this is what you usually want to do. You don't want to put them very here because those are kind of your safety mechanism. Uh, but you cannot put them very further away. There are some limits in which you can put uh, next to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so yeah, you, you can put the, uh, I'm not sure if I understand, you can put the orders like reference to the mid price. So whenever the price changes, your orders can also change. <laughs> the, yes. Uh, when you so you commit a liquidity, let's say one uh, ten uh, one hundred thousand, and then you have to put a shape uh, on the order book. So you have to say, so I want it. Um, you can either say uh, next to the uh, relative to the mid price, you can put like one one unit away, and then you say how how the orders will be structured, and this is how you do it. So, so you put uh, you you put a, an amount. And the shape in the order book, and then the network will do the orders for you. And another interesting topic is uh, the liquidity fee. If I am very, uh, let's say, I want to provide liquidity in a very safe interval, mm -hmm. and those that risk their liquidity uh, get the same fee because it's fixed; it's not variable. Depending, depending on on uh, on the distance from the exactly. mid price yeah. yes so that's correct but i think all all the liquidity providers will not put because of this 
and I think you are right. It's a fair point. Like I, we we, yeah, we, I we can enter into the in the community. We, we did the... This is what I did. Like I put my the 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 amount the orders that I blocked. I put them a bit further away from the mid price. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a fair point. I'm I'm <laughs> thinking of ways how an attacker can exploit this the structure because they are static. They are hard coded. You said not hard coded, but at the beginning of the, uh, they are set by someone and by by me uh, as a market maker. I I could decide if I put them or not, and I decide where I put them, and I can also decide to cancel them if I want, if I oh, want so, in certain conditions. So you can change the. You can change. Speed. You can change the shape. You can do what whatever you want. And and for example, uh, one can change the infrastructure fee uh let let's go to the next slide because uh this infrastructure fee is depending on what so this is me this is my address i committed mm -hmm. 600 000 and i proposed a 0 0.05 but there are others that propose 0, 0, uh, 0 0.04 and this is this was actually the the uh, the fee that was voted by the oh, so network it's, voted. it's yes it's in a way like option Mm -hmm. The lowest will be taken. Okay. 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 And now let's see a bit the algorithm. Uh, here I put a slide with uh, pseudo code, but I think the best slide will be the next ones because it's more visual. So what I did, I subscribed, I I took the Binance API for the market that I was interested in, and I was always I was on WebSocket to read, so I always had the latest price there. Then I provided the liquidity in order to increase the the fees that I would got, and I this happens in the loop. Everything above this happens in a loop. I was monitoring my current exposure, so how long I am, how short I was. And if the current exposure is under certain conditions that I found it uh, preferable, I just put the orders very balanced uh, around the mid price. If I was uh, exposed on, uh, I had a high exposure on short, I was putting the short orders further away from the mid price because I didn't want to accumulate more and more. Because that, that means I would get in a higher leverage a situation and that's very risky and I didn't want to go bankrupt. Um, if I was long, uh, very exposed on the long position, the same thing. I didn't trade. Uh, I didn't want to trade that many long positions. So let's see a visual representation. This happens if I'm not overly exposed in either directions. I just put the orders very nicely here. So my orders are around these areas. And I was winning uh, a lot, a kind, a small profit from all these transactions that happened in in this area. But if something happens, if the price changes quite uh, abruptly, uh, then, and I am long exposed. What I'm doing now, I'm putting my orders further in that direction because I don't want to accumulate more order, uh, my more long position. I want actually to get rid of those long position and go back in this safe scenario and the other way around here on when i'm short i don't want to buy short position and so on. okay so with this algorithm make sure that you can do that fast enough yeah it was everything it was a second it was so the validators guarantee that or uh yes they they yeah they, they build the blockchain especially for this so they they, they can what yeah. I don't know. Doesn't. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry. I, I don't know. But guys, even on Binance, yeah. the people do lots of front, front running. I think that's just a legal thing. It's not an algorithmic thing yet, right? Now you can Yeah, I, I don't know. We can check afterwards. Yeah. You can. Okay. Yep. How can you? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Only the key can actually do that. You can actually see. I mean, so only the concept of dark, dark schools are the one that can just actually what you want to see. Because the dark schools are the ones that actually can prevent you from, from running using passports and so on and so forth, right? And that's, that's, <laughs> I don't know what to do. That's quite an interesting concept. Uh, and so the concept of dark pools is quite an interesting process, uh, and it's happening right now just on EV on EVM on, on the blockchain on the Ethereum one, sorry. Uh, and that actually prevents you from from running because you use flashbots and so on and so forth, and you basically don't expose your transaction to the public mempool, but here, what do you want to actually uh, front run? <laughs> no, we don't have time. I, yeah, sorry. I mean, we're already five minutes. Already okay. five minutes over. Yeah, so I'm. Uh, I'm okay. almost done. So the please keep your energy for the panel <laughs> and bring issues in the panel. <laughs> Okay, so in the end, with this very simple algorithm, I was able to satisfy the requirements. I, in the end, I participated in two simulations. So the initial balance with was two million die, and after the first, uh, the second, the my first simulation, their second simulation, I had a profit of two hundred thousand, and after the third simulation, I had a profit of one hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, my my goal was to not go bankrupt, so I was quite surprised that I actually got the profit. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> if you'd see the code, you probably wouldn't give me the money. Yeah, it's simulated. <laughs> yeah, and I saw a lot of people talking on Discord that the because the community was trading, so they gave some tokens and you say like, man, I and they were receiving money if they were the first, uh, the first one with the most profit. So they were saying that they were losing, uh, using a lot of leverage because they wanted to go to risk to go on the top. So I don't know if the conditions of the simulations are actually real life market conditions. Okay, so um, for me, trading derivatives can be fun, especially if it's on a testnet. Uh, I found Vega a very promising uh, project. Uh, the community is great. The documentation was really good. And uh, it seems like risk strategies and patience also pays off in crypto. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bogdan.